forces to attacking and destroying the enemy's most vital assets. So slowly, it, it, it is talking of special forces and actions which create special effects. From the concept of mass to the concept of concentration of firepower, and of course, as is well known, from static defenses to mobile offenses. Uh, China is no uh, was no stranger to special forces and their actions. Even during World War II and the 1940s Chinese Civil War, from the within the existing battalions, there were people who were able and uh, more capable than others, were put into small teams and got together to do actions very akin to what special forces do. And of course, after the action was over, over they would get disbanded. So in some sort of a way, that thought process and the capability was there. Between the 1950s and the 1980s, the PLA relied on specially trained reconnaissance units within its ground forces for some special missions, which included some sabotage, destruction, etc. The, as I said, before 1979, the, the central concept that guided PLA war preparation was Mao, Mao's notion of early, early total and nuclear war. The Sino-Vietnam conflict of 1979 and 80s was a turning point. It was a slap in the face. Because China went in thinking something, and the fact is, according to some uh, writers, China suffered casualties to the tune of uh, 25 to 26,000 against the Vietnam, Viet, uh, Vietnamese casualties of 6,000. So though, though they went in approximately to the line which they said they asserted, but they had to withdraw because logistically, logistically it was not possible to sustain that. So who won is a big question. The Chinese still think. But nonetheless, they realized what the lessons were. Even during the Vietnam War, the Chinese realized what the Vietnamese, Vietnamese were doing in terms of commando raids and great disruption to the Chinese war-making machine. And during the war itself, the Chinese changed track. And, and they too organized certain commando units uh, to take part. And from there, in 1988, the first special mission rapid reaction unit was formed. Uh, at the Guangzhou uh, military region. Each of the PLA's seven military regions uh, has, have a special operations group about, I mean, this is all from the open uh, sources. Uh, the claim is 1,000 to 2,000 or maybe even more, organized into three battalions each. Contrary to what has been being said here that the command and control should move up, it was at the CMC level, the command and control of the special units. But in 2003, the PLA Special Forces uh, Command was transferred from the military region headquarters to the group armies, which are akin to our core, uh, core headquarters. So that was an important uh, development which showed what, what were they going to use these special forces of the conven conventional PLA. This graphically shows you the um, seven military regions and the different units, which are this different special units of each of the commands. As you will notice, the Gongzhou was the first one to be raised, and the one in Chengdu has been experimenting for a long time into this high-tech, highly informationized uh, warfare, network networking of the SF with the conventional uh, elements. China's 15th Airborne Corps very surprisingly belongs to the PLA Air Force. The airborne element is part of the Air Force, not the Army. It is not a special forces unit per se, but a specialized force, which is, of course, uh, which has already developed a motorized and possibly a mechanized brigade. It has the, uh, some of the things are listed there, which clearly shows the kind of employment that is envisaged in case of a limited but yet uh, intense war. Most of these templates are based on, um, you know, Taiwan-specific scenarios, but they could easily be transposed anywhere else because the Taiwan factor is now, uh, as such, not coming into play too much. 
The Pentagon's 2008 report uh, to the Congress assesses that China, in all, can uh, deploy only 5,000 troops in one go with the number of transport aircrafts that go. And the number of transport aircrafts, big and small, mostly the medium-sized, are uh, just about anywhere between 250 to 300. Uh, the, the open estimates uh, that I'm talking about. But they are into, besides many other things, into things like heavyweight parachutes. They've just copied the Ukrainian one, uh, made by a Chinese uh, airborne equipment factory, which can land an eight-ton load from a maximum altitude of 2.5 kilometers. I have forcibly got some aviation uh, into this slide so that at least I feel comfortable. Lack of transport aircraft, there was a plan to set up the 16th Airborne Corps. But I, mostly it is because of a lack of transport aircraft that this could not be done. But if you saw the news today, BBC, China has uh, today declared its uh, that transport aircraft C919, which is comparable to the, it's, go, it's come in the market, comparable to the A320 and uh, other such same class. So a country which can finally get something like this online wouldn't take much time to build a militarized version which will support its airborne core. The concept of employment um, is roughly conducting preemptive strikes against the enemy's most critical targets, what they call in Chinese uh, this thing, winning victory with one strike. It actually is the most direct means to convince an enemy to desist without having to defeat his military forces or to make political decisions in line with Chinese objectives. By launching swift strikes with elite units and focusing on the enemy's potential vulnerabilities, China can deal symmetrical blows at the enemy with asymmetrical methods. Once again, I say this is not necessarily aimed at Taiwan and the United States uh, supporting Taiwan. It means a basic philosophy that nothing is underhand and uh, all kinds of creativity will be at work. Winning the battle piecemeal is also figures in some of the Chinese literature means destroying selective reconnaissance, electronic and support system in order to disrupt and reduce the effectiveness of the enemy's coordinated air operations. That's where the PLAF uh, 15th Airborne Corps would likely come in. Combining information warfare such as computer hacking with irregular special and guerrilla operations against such network uh, nodes would allow it to mount destructive attacks within the enemy's own operation system while avoiding a major head-on confrontation. So it's, all a, it, it's a complete package that the Chinese concept of employment of special forces is. The 2006 uh, National Defense White Paper of China identified improving special operations capabilities as and underlined army, one of the Army's major mobilization priorities. From there, they must have come a long way, but it's a secretive nation. I mean, this shows you basically uh, the evolution of thought uh, by a re renowned uh, researcher on China, Nan Li. And if you saw, see, the, starting off from 1979 and going downwards to 2002, in the second last uh, column, the emphasis shifts to elite forces and goes on to mechanized elite forces and uh, you know, goes on to mechanized, informationized. So that's the kind of evolution that the special forces of China uh, would have undergone, have undergone rather. Now, beside, like I said in my introductory uh, remarks that uh, besides the special forces, even otherwise, uh, all army, uh, all the, uh, most, some of, some of the army groups are modernizing to effect very, very rapid, rapid deployment. The 2006 National Defense White Paper stated that the Army aims at moving from regional defense to trans-regional mobility and improving its capabilities in air, air-ground integrated operations, long-distance maneuvers, rapid assaults, and special operations. They've woken up late to this joint ops and now going on to integrated ops, but knowing how the Chinese work, the diktat from top, they will probably affect it far faster than many other contemporaries. 
Special operations forces and capabilities are seen by Beijing as keys to success in targeting pivotal enemy vulnerabilities and maintaining control of the pace of campaign. SF teams likely will be well trained to conduct anti-reconnaissance and C2 disruption operations involving deep attack raids and sabotage. Though there is one school of thought that says so far the Chinese haven't demonstrated the capability to sustain uh, deep attacks, small team deep attacks and sustain, uh, but that may be changing. Okay. On paper, intermediate milestones were set for 2010, which they claim to have achieved, and also by 2020 to make major progress towards the above goals. In terms of aircraft, military aircraft, the 19 is a development uh, is a derivative of the y, uh, the Y9 is a derivative of the Y8, which is an AN12 uh, variety, ancient, which is capable of, capable of carrying 98 armed soldiers. But as I told you, they've just developed that civilian aircraft and also. They have a program of developing a, a strategic heavy lift aircraft. It's in the future, but knowing the Chinese, they'll get there. In terms of roles and equipment, uh, the paper uh, which has been submitted to Senjaos covers a whole lot of things. And uh, Chinese emphasis on modernizing its special forces from right from the start. They were the first one to get the latest equipment, and it is... Uh, it is quite uh, believable that off-the-shelf whatever is available is available with Chinese special forces, including those who are into counter-terrorism roles along with the police and the uh, people's armed police. So what is the need for, uh, need for a further change? As has been brought out uh, by some of the speakers here, you know, China... There are huge African investments. You name the country. I'll give you an example. When 2003, when we went uh, for the United Nations peacekeeping along with our attack helicopters and everything, China had deployed an um, uh, 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 engineering regiment there. Just an engineering regiment, that's all. They were very efficient. And uh, at the end, we knew something was amiss because four years down the line, most mines all along right, right up to Lumumbashi were actually controlled by... Chinese, uh, uh, you know, businessmen who had come in. So, like that, all over Africa, they have uh, uh, about almost 1,600 troops deployed with the United Nations. It is quite possible that some of them are special ops and kept there as a force in being uh, to take care of Chinese interest. There are reports of about 4,000 troops in Sudan on lines of uh, what was told in, um, in uh, POK, and it, knowing, uh, knowing how the Chinese operate, they are quite impressed by the American model of special forces, what they did in Iraq, what they did in Afghanistan. And in fact, most of their uh, modernization is modeled on those lines. So this kind of a force projection to take care of your interest, not with mass, um, you know, you'll, but elite special forces, small teams, disguised ostensibly as, uh, you know, something else. I am sure they are very much doing it. For example, sea lanes. Almost 20% uh, of the Chinese ships which are passing through Gulf of Aden in 2008 came under Somali pirates' attack. So now they have deployed two destroyers and uh, one supply ship. Uh, the total crew of 800 consists 70 special forces, uh, trop, uh, elite forces, who will take on this anti-piracy action. There are Huge cases of the Chinese diaspora all over being, being at risk, like Ethiopia, some nine were killed, a whole lot of kidnappings. So it is not unthinkable that in the years to come, Chinese presence in terms of small forces, special forces, to look after Chinese interest would increase. Okay. China has had a long history of asymmetric and uh, special warfare. The Tang dynasty was the one where this ninja uh, thing came and you know, traveled on to feudal Japan. And even that time, the focus was to give the ninja the best equipment, you know, that time in terms of some explosives, snowshoes, those were the latest equipment, and tactics, 
you know, the uh, surprise, you know, the, the emphasis on surprise, etc. From there, actually, China took a couple of steps back during the during the Mao era. But as I brought out in the presentation, what they suffered in Vietnam and what they saw the Americans in the West do in uh, Iraq, both the wars and Afghanistan, has uh, definitely made up their minds that modernization and dependence on special forces is the way forward. That was uh, China. Coming to Pakistan, a very difficult topic. That's why there are only three slides on this. China is such an irregular country that irregular warfare comes very naturally to them. So it's extremely difficult to analyze and go into whether was there a lot of thinking behind what they do. Uh, which, and of course, again, this is a very, very personal view and from open sources. The SSG, based on the 19 Baloch Regiment, was created in 1956. Six companies modeled on US Special Operation Forces. Each company had units specialized in, as is given there. 1965, the scope increased to a battalion plus. They, during the 65 war, 120 special, there's a SSG were dropped behind in three.